Welcome Sojourners, this is Jonathan with Sojourners Awake. Last we left off, the Sojourners were right smack dab in the middle of a battle. Their mission was to reactivate the Burning Beacon, or the Demon Zapper, a large celestial radiant source of heat that obliterates fiends within a hundred foot radius. If they get this done, that'll help turn the tides for the Blood War but specifically aiding the Devil Army. The Sojourners have quite a task ahead of them, as well as defending themselves from the onslaught, they discovered that a celestial being, a holy angel named Moonglow, was in charge of powering this beacon, was currently being held as a prisoner of war. Now they had to defend him. In addition, Moonglow after experiencing some of the Sojourner's magic, retrieves some of his memories in specifically the origin story of Zariel, the Archduchess of Avernus. Before she was a fiend, she was a holy celestial warrior in league with Moonglow in the Order of the Balance. This presents a problematic intrigue into the plot and one that the Sojourners now have to solve. And you'll find that in this episode, they have a couple skill challenges that they have to go through in order to get the beacon put back on. It was pretty high intensity. Uh, it was a very intense battle. It was a very intense time, and I think they handled the challenge quite well. I would also like to thank Tabletop Audio for their wonderful ambiance and background music. You can visit them at www.tabletopaudio.com. I hope you enjoy this episode. May your story continue. And so our story continues. The cave resonated with sounds of cheer. Each of the sojourners celebrated Felthren's birthday. Although in such a place as this, the rudest of festival elements would have to do, until Bramble brought forth old stalwarts, 111172 Hardale from Citadel Dalsgum of the Second Age. This 324 year old brew brought a little joy to an otherwise dire situation. For now lay before them the long march to the beacon. Not wanting to risk the teleportation complications, Bramble led the way on foot with Professor Thaddeus at his side. Meanwhile, Garandan walked slowly, maintaining concentration on keeping the firestorms at bay, and everyone noticed that for the first time in a long while, the weather was bearable. The beacon lay collapsed on its side, the glass orb was shattered, scattered across the malicious ground, and surrounding the beacon, guarding it like a prized meal swarmed hordes of dretches and chasmes. Seeing there was no way to the beacon but through the crowd, the sojourners launched their attack. Bramble snuck back and forth between teeth of rocks jutting up from the ground, firing one missile after the other, landing the demons dead in their own ichor. Felthren tore through the fields of fiends with lightning speed, calling out challenges in the language sure to draw attention, pure dwarven dialect. Zarion spent his time channeling his energies to support the crew with darkness and clouds and pulling the wounded from the thirst of battle. Hay saw the glowing green eyes of the slug-like dretches moving towards him, and he attempted to lift himself up into the air, but then the demons manifested two muscular pink arms and pulled themselves toward him with great haste. He was caught up in the fray and fell into a pile of filthy vermin, clawing their way to his certain death. All of this reflected in the eyes of the old wiry dwarf, and he cursed, yelling with maddening fury, swinging his warhammer right and left, sending fiends flying back and forth into the abyss. And there lay Hay, wounded gravely. Garandan thought the battle was going poorly, but bolstered himself with power from Lathander, for he knew that their only chance to attempt to balance the war was to turn back on the beacon. With the same force of nature as earlier, his voice boomed throughout the canyon, 
and a strong celestial word of healing flooded the plain, landing its soft, sweet light upon the bruised skin of the sojourners. The battle had now been turned. Together, they moved towards the beacon, providing watch and defense, as Hay found Moonglow, the holy being, a servant of light, now nearly crippled under the torture of these wicked fiends. The unicorn relayed that if only they stood the tower aright, recalculated the runes, and placed his body upon the beacon, then the righteous power once again surged throughout this desert. However then, from out of the abyss, the demons were not going to give up this gained ground so easily. And there a Merilith stood in opposition, and so our story continues. At the top of the initiative. Hey, the Merilith sees you and says, Step away from the prisoner. And for a brief moment, we get to see Hay's response to this. How does he appear as this large, slithering, praying mantis sprouting six arms with six long swords, wields it around like a metal windmill ready to charge into you? Does anybody have any questions about this scene? Any clarification on the mission at hand? We got to destroy the beacon or turn it on. It needs to be turned on. And that that will give us the advantage on the battlefield? Yes, because it issues forth a radiant heat that the demons are particularly susceptible to. Anyone within a radius would no doubt take damage as well when this thing kicks back on. So we have to be out of there before it turns on. You have to be out of the radius. Yes. Okay. Which soon, if Garandan manages to make his way to the to the uh, control panel, he will soon discover. Ted, did you have any questions about this situation as we get wrapped up? No. Bramble. Okay, Bramble. We are not yet aware of the Maryland, right? Only Hay is. Oh no! You see him just. Oh, the, okay. You see the Marilith. Her, she has this beautiful woman's head attached to this praying mantis body standing like 10 feet tall now opposing hay out of breath you rise to the beacon place your hand upon the shard remains and look to see hay now in opposition garen dan did you have any questions about this situation is there anything lying around that we could use to like levy it up like to uh, not just so it's not just ah, physical great strength. question yes there is <laughs> Yes, and his name is Felthrin Grovelor. Hey, we see you terrified. He realizes this is something unnatural, something that looks obviously powerful, and he can feel the, the evil radiating off of her. But at the same time, from behind, he can feel the goodness coming from the unicorn. And Moon so, Good. yeah, caught between the two, he realizes that he is the only thing standing between moon glow and certain death he looks her square in the eyes and he says i will not move and die and she's going to take six attacks against you uh -huh. Garandam, it's been a lot of fun guys <laughs> garandam with the foresight as he was running over he saw this happening and so he's just going to let out a huge blast and he's going to use all five of his warding flares to put disadvantage on five of those attacks he can use one in a, t a minimum of one, but as many wisdom modifiers as he has, and I'm a plus five. So I can use five. It <laughs> can you do it only once per turn? No, it says you must use minimum of one per turn, and you can use a maximum of your wisdom modifier. I'm going to challenge you on that because it is a reaction. Yeah. And reaction. you only get one reaction per round. Oh, okay. Well, okay, then I'll do. That's fine. I you can impose disadvantage on one of them. Uh, we'll go for the natural 20 if you get one. So we got a 27, 29, a 20, and a 19. A 29, and a 25. I'm going to give disadvantage on one of those. 24. So all six hit? I tried. Uh, yeah, all six hit. My 13 armor class. What are you doing in Avernus? 
I... 78 points of damage. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, I'm still up. Okay. Uh, she sees that, and she's going to go ahead and strangle you with her tail now. Oh. Uh, that's a Ooh. 16. Okay, I am going to use Misty Escape. And so basically, I bamf aside. As a reaction? Yes. Okay. She goes to strangle you with this serpentine tail. Uh, I can vanish in a puff of mist in response to harm. So after I take the 78, I'm just going to turn invisible and teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space that I can see. And I'm just going to uh, go right behind her. So let me just move my guy here. And I remain invisible until the start of my next turn or until I attack or cast a spell. Okay. She turns around and glares at you with these yellow eyes and looks at you, gives a kiss and a wink and says, I still see you, mortal. Activating her true sight. The Merilith is... Okay. Yeah, if... If you are not going to take the grappling damage, the Merilith is then going to use her tail and she's going to squeeze the neck of the unicorn and hold the unicorn right, holding the celestial being hostage. The unicorn is now grappled. Next up in the initiative, Bramble, go for it. Um, all right, Bramble's going to walk over. Whoop, grab the wrong token. Bramble's going to walk over to... Grab tokens now. Okay, I can move Zerion. I cannot move Bramble. Anyways, so Bramble's gonna walk oh. basically to where he can see around the corner. Okay. Um, to get a clear shot at uh, the Maryland and okay. uh, take a shot with the glove of firing with his with one of his silver tipped arrows. You're going for a nineteen. Okay. is a 19 no it's an 18 what in the world it's lying oh, past her ear yeah uh, that's scary Bramble yikes. can't miss I know what's up with that I rolled a 3 <laughs> no it was a 15 okay I think that's it then <laughs> <laughs> okay let's move on to Garandan then um, so after Garandan uh, gets him with the, the light to bind it, it's going to um, point his finger at the demon and, and shoot a guiding bolt um, to okay. light it up. As 19. Well. 19. I get to roll with advantage because I got foresight. So I get a 22. So I'm casting it at a fourth level. 4, 8, 6. Twenty-nine damage. Yeah, twenty-nine damage. And um, as a bonus action, he's going to harness the sun's light and shine his shield into the uh, Marilith's eyes and try and blind her. Uh, you would have to be melee range. Ah, okay. Are That's you fine. going to abandon your post here at the Burning Beacon? No, I'm about uh, to um, help Felthrin pick it up. Yeah, but anyone who's trying to hit her, she does have advan does have advantage because she's lit up like a lightning bolt. Next attack, yep. That means it's the demon's turn, and they are converging. Bramble, they're moving up on you. One of them jumps on the beacon. Uh, Sergeant McCormick <laughs> yelling out, Look out, mortal maggots! They're coming your way! They are moving towards Felthrin. And Garandan, and one towards Zerion. Zerion, one attacks you. That's going to be a 13 to hit. Okay. That misses. Uh, three of them against Felthrin. 
28, 26, 25. They're all good. Okay. You'll take 39 points of damage. They charge on top of you. And Bramble, you're taking three. 18, 28, and 12. That's 26 points of damage. Half one of those. 13 and 13. I guess you can, so... Uh, just 20 points of damage, then. You guys are staving them off just fine. Felt, uh, excuse me, Zerion, it's now your turn. All right. From what I'm seeing right now, we are surrounded. Um, Hayes in the tight spot where Marilyn. Um, it does seem that way. With the challenge of, yeah, with the challenge of raising the burning beacon, the Marilith is holding the unicorn hostage. Hayes looking pretty rough. What would you like to do? I could turn into an eagle, right? Well, before before yes. I do that, I want I Man. want to I want to um since since we are surrounded, it would be wiser to cast um give me one second while I pull up my character sheet. I want to cast cloud. Fall cloud around the area to give of some time to um so uh, just yeah just so you know fog cloud would obscure the vision for everyone who uses sight that means disadvantage on all attacks okay oh, all right <laughs> all right then or you could place it near the Merilith with hay and moonglow but again you now recognize the Merilith can see through yeah, she can she can see true sight. And even she has true sight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dang, man. Whew. Yeah, fog fog cloud seems to be not a great spell to cast in this scene. Yeah, because we gotta knock them all down. Alright, then the eagle will it'll have to be I have to transform into an eagle. Alright, and so that'll be your action. And you watch uh Zerion, if you would describe how you form into this eagle, this flying creature. Um I'm enveloped, or uh, I, I scoop up some dirt, crush it in my hands, toss it on the ground, puff to a black cloud, and an eagle zips out into the sky. Okay. Uh, you can move, I think, up to 120 feet. So what is your aim with your movement? Uh, I can only do one action while I'm moving, right? Well, shape-shifting is your action, but I'm allowing you your movement as an eagle. So, where do you want to go? I want to get, well, I want to go next to Hay to get, to, so I can rescue him. Okay. He's not looking too good. This eagle just flies straight through the sky. Hey, you start to see this beautiful, majestic eagle, um, maybe with a couple horns sprouting from its head. I'm not so sure. I can't see from this distance. It flies over towards you are at. All right, Zerion, I think that's the end of your turn. Felthrin, we're moving to you. I guess Felthrin has to whack him smack on these three guys that are surrounding him. It's your choice. Despite the pouring demons coming through, you still have the beacon to activate. Oh, crap. Um... Yeah, crap. Sorry, guys. I got to do what Felthren would do. And Felthren's actually going to... Um, he's going to knock the... He's going to attack the guy on top of the... Uh, on top of the beacon first. And then he's going to smack the guy directly below him. And, you know, assuming that... Assuming that he knocks him over. He's going to attack the guy directly below him. And then the guy... Uh, to his right, and hopefully he ends one of them so that he gets the extra attack to finish the fourth one. You're going to climb mm -hmm. onto the beacon, correct? Oh, do I have to climb up to get that guy? He's about 10 feet ahead of you, like above you. Okay, so I can't just whack them all then at this point. Be a hard reach. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I guess I'll use my, I'll use five feet of my movement. Can I, can mm -hmm. I get up there? You can with a nice little climb. It's difficult terrain, so it halves your movement. So all right, so I'll take 10, 10 yep. feet of my movement to get up there and smack him. Okay. And then I can move ten feet back down to smack the other guys. 
Go for it. All right. Oh, that's going to miss. So I'm going to swing at him again. Well, I, I assume it's going to miss. Uh, yeah, 13. never mind. It's absolutely yeah. going to miss. Yeah. Uh, next one's a nat 20. Nice. So that's going to be, uh, well, that's a lot of damage. Um, 27 points of bludgeoning damage. And do I, uh, do I double my lightning damage die as well? Yes. And eight points of lightning damage. Is he still standing? Standing on top of this beacon, this lightning bolt just surges from the plains of Avernus and you just tear straight through him. He goes flying off the beacon. Trothman right. stands victorious on top of it. Cool. Then can I use 10 feet of my movement to jump back down and uh, attack the guy directly south of me? Yes. All right. And now with my great, great weapon mastery, if I reduce the guy to zero, I get an extra attack. Will that count if I'm moving in between? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I get two more attacks then. If I whack the first guy out, then I'll whack the next guy to him. Uh, first one is plenty to hit. It's going to be 25 points of bludgeoning and three points of lightning damage. He, he dies? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, the next one's only a 12 to hit. 12 okay. hits? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That's 25 points of uh, bludgeoning and six points of lightning damage. It's so good watching you tear through these. Uh, you have effectively lowered the challenge of raising the beacon as the currently the demons are not guarding it. Now here's where Felthren ruins the plan because um, as a bonus action, he's going to change into a black bear and he's going to take whatever movement he has left to head over towards hay. So uh, how much movement do I have left? Uh, you spent I used 20 of my Dwarven movement and now a Black Bear. So do I still just have five feet? I'm going to say half of your Black Bear movement. Okay, so that would be 20, 20 feet. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20. <laughs> and I'm going to roar at the at the uh, Merylinth. Okay. And uh, sorry about abandoning the beacon, guys, but this is what I would do. Felthrin seeing the life of his friend, Hay hanging in the balance. Moonglow is gonna take a response. Um, you see that Moonglow's unicorn horn is beginning to light up with his energy, sensing the presence of good, beginning to overturn the balance of evil in this area. Moonglow begins to call out, I, I, and then you sense that Moonglow is trying to say something, but currently, he is being choked by the Marilynth in a grappled form. Moongloak has nothing to do but going to try and escape. He is unsuccessful. Hay seems to be in a tight spot, coughing and spitting up blood. Uh, yeah, because you've got sand, sand and blood and sweat in your eyes. You're just nearly blinding through this plain of Avernus. You look like you've been through a sawmill. Just your robes totally slashed. You are actively bleeding, and you step aside and misty step right behind the Marilith, only to see that she recognizes your position. What would you like to do? So I have a, a question for you, DM. I have a spell where normally the effect is self. If it's cast at a higher level, I could have it affect other people, other creatures. Would you be willing to allow me to not cast it on self, but on Moonglow? It's bending the rules, so absolutely, I, I understand. What What's the spell? Etherealness. Yeah, if it's going to break things, don't don't worry about it. Her. I think I think what you're intending to do is reduce the grapple. I'm trying to get him in a safe place. Okay. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, true sight could see into the ethereal plane, but not affect it. So yes, that would that would actually save moon glow, and I right. will allow it. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Um, am I within touch range of the Marilith? Yes. Uh, I, I rest my hand down on the coiled tail. And I say, it's a shame. You're so beautiful and I really wish we could get to know you. There, there's so much that I don't know in this world or any of the worlds, really. 
And then he, he bends down and he kisses the scales of her tail. And as he does that, he also flicks his fingers over to Moonglow, who then shimmers out of sight and into the ethereal plane, into a, a, a shadowy facsimile of this world. Moonglow disappears from your sight. The Marilith, seeing what you're doing, grins and says, Don't worry. Yinagu will have his celestial feast, and you will be the appetizer. Gladly. And he stands up and he holds his arms out just like this. At the top of the round, the Marilith, that bear is menacing, however, Hay is a obstacle. 21, a 12, 23, and a natural 20. I believe 65 would unconscious you. Uh, he, yeah. <laughs> All right, Hay. With her using up four of her swords, she still has two more swords that she is holding, ready to attack Felthrin. But since you were the one who stood in her way, and since she indeed rolled a natural 20, she lops off one of your limbs. And we watch Felthrin, you see it. Zerion, as an eagle, you see both of you converging, bramble from a distance. You turn as these dretches are just slashing back and forth at you. You see Hay outstretch his arms. And the Merilith just tear into him like a whirlwind. And Hay, from the elbow point, your right arm is severed. Are I don't even have time to cry out. Oh yeah, I'm well yeah. beyond unconscious. No, I don't even have time to cry out. I just fall down and my blood pools darkly on the sand. The Merilith moves towards Felthrin and issues the remaining two attacks. 19 and 24. Uh, those are both good. 26 points of damage to you. Okay. And then she is going to attempt to grapple you with her tail as well. Are you a large creature? She I'm a large have, creature. I think she is a large creature as well, but she'll have disadvantage on that attack. It is going to be a 16 to grapple you. That's plenty good. All right, you will have to use your action to ungrapple yourself or attack with disadvantage as this tail wraps around you and holds you in stasis as you watch Hay fall to the ground, collapsing on the floor of Avernus. Times have gotten dark Indeed, as the Marilith enters, ends her turn. Bramble, you are surrounded on all sides. The beacon has yet to be established. You hear the cries of more chasmes and more dretches pouring forth from the abyss. What is your decision? Bramble's been keeping an eye on what's going on with the Marilith, even as the demons converge around him. Um, he's not much for strength anyways. So he is uh, seeing Hay fall. Um, he's going to disengage from the demons around him, um, move basically just away from them so they won't interfere a shot. I believe the Marilynth is still glowing of fairy fire, so his attack should get advantage. Uh, 18? Is that, was that a hit? I forgot if you said it was 18 or 19. I'm going to allow it. Okay. It is barely hitting. And here's why. As she takes that last grip and she pulls Felthrin in for a gentle kiss. Felthrin, you do something that allows that armor class to be lowered by one point. What is it? Well, I'm a bear. Um, so I'm a much bigger target than she's used to trying to grapple. So as she wraps her tail around me, she has to expose more of her body to bramble to get enough grab around me to grapple me. So, so there's a larger portion of her torso showing as he's, uh, as 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 uh, Felthran the brown bear is getting wrapped up. So the uh. bolt strikes true, um, and deals a total of forty damage. Was that a silver tip? Yes. 118 points total 
being done to this creature as this silver bullet tears through her skin. It continues going on miles through Avernus and leaves a large gaping seared hole as if someone shot a burning hot bullet through her body. She immediately grabs that empty cavity and that space, crying out and shrieking. Bramble, anything else? Let him go! Garandan, how do you proceed? And so Garandan, seeing everyone moving uh, away from the burning beacon, is also going to run over to Hay. Uh, he uses 25 feet of movement, and he's going to, he can't probably restitch, but he's going to cure wounds uh, at a fourth level. Um, and you... Okay, so that's... Should have rolled it already. Here we go. Uh, he's got 12, um, 1924 um, points of healing on hay uh, in a light beam coming down. And then for using that light, same, he's going to use his shield now that he's in melee range to blind the Maryland as a bonus action. Okay. Uh, she has to um, save on a constitution saving throw. How much healing was it? I'm sorry. Uh, 24. Oh, thank you. We'll get to that scene in a second. But as you blind this creature, her eyes close shut, and these two large antennas sprout forth from her head and begin sensing all around you, landing one on you, and she takes a reaction against you, Garandam. Uh, that's going to be a 22 to hit. Can I reaction warding flare for disadvantage? Actually, they already have disadvantage on me because of um, foresight. That's a natural one. Um, and then <laughs> angering Avernus as you blind her with this light and you blow up the rewarding flare, it fries one of her antenna and angers the land of Avernus. So I need everyone to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, I'll give Garandan advantage. You are going for a 20 or higher. That was close. 48 oh, points of damage. The ground cracks open. If you've met 20 or higher, you only take 24 fire damage. Zerion, you would be completely immune to this for obvious reasons. You are extended high up in the sky at this point. Um, you see my scale mail flash? Is this resistant to fire? And it hurts, but it doesn't hurt as much. And you see Felthran, the brown bear, turn back into Felthran, the dwarf. And now separating you. Bramble, you are on the other side. Garandan, you are, you're, the soles of your feet are hanging off this edge of the ground just crumbles and leaves behind this pool of lava. It's a 10 foot jump across. Bramble, you're on the other side. Hey, your arm, well, your other arm is dangling on the edge and you are at risk for falling into the lava. It will require well, I the took 48 points of damage, but I'm also unconscious again. <laughs> you are. So you watch as Hay's arm just like lays off and the lava just licks him up and he begins to incinerate and burn. Uh, Garandan, your turn is done. It is Hay's turn. So Hay, if you would make the first death saving throw. 19. Hay hanging on by a thread. You I don't hear... know that I want to live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> if I'm charred to pieces, I would... unless I can get a Darth, Darth Vader suit out of it. <laughs> uh, you hear Sergeant McCormick running up don't let the little slack bit out get after him and he runs towards you fl slashing back and forth um, he takes out one of the dretches uh, question hey when you went unconscious I suppose your etherealness wore off from Uglo no it's actually not a concentration spell okay it's got an 8 hour duration and that's it can anything end it? I suppose counterspell or somebody slipping into the ethereal plane themselves could be on the same plane, but I, I, I'll check if you want to continue. What what I'm hearing is that Moonglow cannot be returned to the material, the plane of Avernus without your permission. Or until eight hours pass and the spell does dissipate then. Wow. So with one of the objectives being in the ethereal plane now, safely hidden away, none of you can see the, the, the unicorn at this point. 
It is now the demon's turn. Uh, this demon, of course, gets incinerated. Bramble, a demon, sneaks up behind you. Two of them are prowling forward. Uh, they're going to make two attacks against you. First attack is a 20. Second attack is a 29. Both hit. Okay. If you want to, can you, do you have a reaction to use? I do. So 20 points of damage. Okay. Okay. One hit point. <laughs> nice. That's way better than zero hit points. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Zerion, you are an eagle flying high above with an eagle's eye view of this entire situation. I believe you are a giant eagle, if that is correct. Mm-hmm, that's correct. So how would you like to proceed with this horrible mess? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um... <laughs> Looking at the battlefield, um, Bramble is, is attacked by two demons, but our main adversary is this Marilyn lady. So I want to do multi attack on her. Two attacks, one with the beak and one with his talent. Do I roll for that? You do. Um, I'll give you, a, I think it's a plus seven to attack. Okay. Okay, two D20s and you're All right. for a 19. All right, first one's a seven. Ugh. Another one's a nine. You dive bomb in, and what she does is she lifts up one of her swords and nearly takes your head off, and you skate. You, like, do an air break really hard as this horrible, wicked long sword tears through the air. Um, do you want to stay within melee range of her? Uh, no, obviously not. Can't have board cut my wings off, so I'm gonna have to move. Okay. Uh, out of range, at least. You hear Sergeant McCormick saying, "We are getting our behinds handed to us." Now, next up, uh, will be Felthrin. All right, I've got to try to break their grapple. It's athletics or just strength. Yeah, you, uh, you have a choice of athletics. Or an athletics check. You have a choice, is that what you said? Yeah, you have a choice of acrobatics or... Uh, athletics. Athletics, yeah. Mm -hmm. Athletics sounds fantastic. Oof, 15? That's not enough. All right. You push and push and this tail just squeezes you tighter and tighter. Yeah, I don't think I can do anything else. Hard times for Felthrin. That's it. Hard times for Felthrin indeed. He's gonna Moonglow. grunt. Okay, Moonglow is going to take a minute. All of a sudden, you hear a voice in your head amidst the screams and the chaos, the blood and the sweat, the stink of ichor and the heat, of fire. You hear a voice in your head. It's a loud whisper, as if someone has gained access into your mind. Hello, this is, is Moonglow. I, I am the unicorn that you do not see. I am in a room and if you can hear me, I have remembered something. Maybe it was the magic, maybe it was being sent away, but I suddenly remembered who I am. I am Moonglow, partner of Talos, of the Order of the Balance. We arrived here with Zariel to end the blood war. She was taken prisoner and converted into a fiend. Talos went to the material plane. I, Moonglow, stayed in Avernus. I buried Zariel's sword far away from here. Its name is Angel Strike. I, I, it's all coming back to me now. I think it is uh, hidden far away, but I can't tell you where. I do know that. Bell, the Duke of Avernus. He too saw me plant it. And he, ah, oh, the last thing I remember, he sapped my brains. And I was placed here on the beacon. It is my job. It is my calling. It is my purpose to stand here guarding. But I can't let the man who saved my life. 
suffer for me. I'm willing to risk annihilation if you are here to restore the balance. And if you see Talos or Zariel, tell them hello for me. Munglo, out. Be sure to tune into part two as the Sojourners escape the Burning Beacon.